All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am back. I'm back on my exercising on Tuesdays over here in Kentuckyana. It's a nice, beautiful day. It's probably about, hmm, what is it, Fluffy? What is it? Yeah, he said, I better watch out. It's not come out. <laughs> Anyways, it's a nice, uh, Nice, beautiful day here in the bluegrass state of Kentucky. We're gonna walk around this parking lot. I need to get in the sun, cause it's a little chilly. Anyway, so what's been going on? What's been going on? Um, you guys probably like, man, can you talk? Can you say something? Well, uh, Fluffy, he's right here. Yeah, he's right there. Uh, and I'm just gonna walk right next to him. We're just gonna walk up and down, up and down this big old parking lot in the sun though because brr, I shouldn't have wore shorts <laughs> uh, like I was saying what's been going on so what what happened today Mr. Fluffy Bear what happened today we woke up right woke up really didn't even want to film I started a video stopped the video started again stopped it and now none of it looks good when I piece it all together um, so pretty much what happened was, is we woke up, we had to go drop some paperwork off at an appointment, um, to make sure everything was squared away on that. And after we got done with that paperwork, oh, excuse me, exercising the burps out of me. At least it came out the attic and not the basement. You know what I mean? <laughs> Fluffy, was that funny? Yes, that was funny. Anyways, uh. Uh, after we dropped the paperwork off the appointment, we had to go get Mr. Fluffy Poodle. We had to get the Fluffy Poodle his flea, tick, and heartworm medicine because it was that time. Um, now we're going back the other way. So, yeah, it was that time to go get our, go get his flea, tick, and heartworm medication. And what did we do after that? After that, we went over to... Um, oh, we went to Bed Bath & Beyond today. Went over there to see Hilt. Went over there to see if they had any, um, any crafts, any cool ideas or anything that would be really, uh, really educational or beneficial to myself and my children. So, I had to go see what was up over there. Didn't find absolutely anything that I was in the mood to do. So we left there. We went on over to where did we go, Fluffy? Where did we go next? Um, I, I am losing my train of thought. I really am. Hmm. Hmm. This is what happens when you suffer from brain injuries and. <sighs> Why am I? What was going on just now? What was I just talking about? What was I talking about? What was I talking about? What was I talking about? Um, we went to... No, we didn't go to Bed Bath & Beyond. We went to Hobby Lobby. That's where we went to. See, I don't even know what I'm talking about. All right, so we went over to Hobby Lobby. And uh, we tried to see what crafts that they had there. And we didn't find any that I was in the mood to do. After that, we went to the mall. Yep. After that, we went to the mall. Um, why did we go to the mall? Because it wasn't all the way warm yet, but it, it was starting to get a little, uh, a little bit sunny out. Sun wasn't out all the way and I wanted to just walk. I wanted to get out the house. I wanted just to get away from the environment that I was in and the mall, I mean, <laughs> just walked around. They were doing some COVID vaccinations at the mall. I mean, I thought that was pretty cool. I probably won't get one, but I thought that was pretty cool. You ask why, why won't I get a COVID vaccine? Eh, I have my own, I have my own beliefs about things and my own opinions. What I'm trying to say is I respect yours, right? If you, if you invite me to your place or your house and you say, Hey, you need to follow my rules on my pro on your property. I'm going to follow those rules. If you come to my house, you don't have to follow, or you have to follow my rules, but you have the 
option to either do that or not. It's really that simple. See, nowadays people want to get all butt hurt about everything in life when it don't need to be like that. Life's too short. Life is really, really too short. So, uh, after we got done with the mall, we had to go over to Walmart and grab some things for dinner. Um, I made some chicken fettuccine Alfredo tonight for dinner. So how did I do that? I took up some chicken, diced it in little, uh, little cubes. A cube is about a one inch by one inch square. Um, that's, and, uh, I diced that up, put in a little bit of olive oil with chicken bouillon. Um, no need to put, you know, salt, pepper, garlic, just sprinkle a little bit of chicken bouillon on your chicken. And then you could easily fry it up in a little bit of uh, olive oil once it gets done cooking. I take it off the heat, add in some, uh, take it off the heat, put it in a little container until I finish boiling off my noodles. You boil off your noodles until they're nice and al dente. Al dente means it's not all the way soft, but it has a tad bit of a bite to it. So um, we cooked them off until they were al dente. Then you reserve about a third to a half cup of your uh, boiling water. I call it starch water, okay? That starch is what helps marry the sauces together. Um, it really helps it bind them because the starch, it's like a thickening agent. Um, why does this guy know so much about cooking? Well, it's easy peasy lemon squeezy as I was a chef. Um, yes, that's right. I have cooked all over the world. And when I say all over the world, literally, I've circled the globe what, a couple times and I've cooked all over. Um, I specialize in uh, Spanish cuisine and Asian cuisine, American. Uh, I know how to barbecue. Um, Italian I know how to I know how to make some really good sauces and noodles but when it boils down to it that's not what I really like so I preferably love to just make some Spanish cuisine and uh, some Asian you know, I could eat Asian every day some beef bulgogi whoo some really good sticky rice or some fried rice um, some vegetables see there's many many different ways that you can make Asian food. Um, same thing with Spanish. You're using a, you're, you're using not a lot of ingredients. Sometimes you can use a lot of ingredients and you want that, um, sweet, salty and tangy all at once, or you can just pick one of those or uh, dibble dabble in a little bit of each. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, I've also, uh, I also know how to do uh, sugar sculptures. Um, you know that, that sugar, the pulled sugar, poured sugar that you guys see on the Food Network channel? Um, I know how to do all that along with watermelon carvings. Um, am I bragging? No, I just, actually I think that would be a really good video for me and Fluffy to do one day is grab some watermelons um, during the summertime, carve them up in, into roses, um, people's face all sorts of different flowers and make the watermelon come to life. What I really like about carving watermelons is you can literally take about a five, $10 watermelon and turn around and flip it for about 50 bucks. Um, there's people who buy a carved watermelon for about 45, $50. Um, I know some carvings of mine I've sold for hundred, hundred and fifty dollars and all it is is a watermelon. I carve it up in about an hour or two. I think my longest carving ever took me was about three, four hours. Um, but that's, when you do something you love and something you like, it's, it's, it's not time. Uh, I don't mind. Somebody called me up right now and was like, hey, hey, Big O, go get a watermelon. I'm gonna pay, pay your watermelon 10 bucks. That's all I have. Um, can you carve a watermelon for flowers for me? I'd probably do it. I'd probably deliver it too. But <laughs> I mean, it's it is what it is. I, I miss them days. Oh, but yeah. But anyways, back to dinner. So um, kind of got squirreled there. Uh, so um, back to the sauce. Once I got done with the uh, once I got done with the noodles, then I take the noodles with that reserved with the reserved starch water. I take that and. 
I add in the Alfredo sauce. Um, whenever I use anything from a can, jar, anything, I cannot just eat it as is. I have to add. Um, and make it better. Make it my way. So what do I do? I take two different um, brands of Alfredo, mix those about half and half, add in a little bit of butter, a little bit of Parmesan cheese, a tad bit of garlic, some Italian seasoning, that's oregano thyme, not thyme, 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 <laughs> um, oregano thyme, coriander, I can go on for days, but anyways, you take your seasonings and you throw them in there, your Italian seasonings, right? A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, you whip it up, you add in your, add in your chicken, stir it up nice and good. And it's bing bam wiggity wham. It's a lip smacker. It's like <laughs> you're like this flipping guy walking around talking to his phone. Y'all are probably like, man, does he ever get tired of that? Nope. Sometimes I get a little exhausted, right? Then I, I don't get motivated. But when I look at a camera, when I perform to to see like right now I, I, I ah. when I try to be perfect it doesn't it never comes out right when I tried when I'm just myself you see I have a really good time everybody's smiling everybody's dandy everybody's fine as wine having a self so big Dano and fluffy time Oh man. So we go over here. I'll show you guys the snow, right? It's, uh, I'm literally out here. You see the snow right here, right? That's about all we got left is what they pushed up on the sides. And that's it. Not much. Normally, me and Fluffy Bear, we play in that little uh, grass area right behind us, right there. Yeah, we play over there, have a little hay day. You're like, what's a hay day? Well, we just have fun. So y'all know about that redneck talk right there. Mm -hmm. But anyways, y'all want to see Fluffy? See how he's doing? Here he is. And then we're coming to the edge and you kick your leg out to turn them. Do an auto sit. Good sit. That I also like doing coming to every line and making them sit. Good. Come on. So another line. Good. Come on. So that's that's another little trick. Um, yeah, you, you take your uh, parking lines there. And you have them sit at every single one. You have them do something new every single one. So you don't have to have them sit. You can have them lay down. You can have him have your pet. I don't mean like him. Like I'm talking like him. But if you have a female, <laughs> it's gonna be a her or whatever you want to identify your pet as. Yeah. What's wrong, buddy? Oh, just step on something. All right, that salt toughen up his feet also. While we're out here on this, this is a brand new blacktop we're, or we're walking on. Um, the first time, now I, when was it, about last year? I don't know if there's the video. It, look, you can look back on YouTube, see if there's a video about a year and a year, year and a half ago where we we're walking on this blacktop it was exactly fresh um, when i say exactly man it was you know, the blacktop just finished and it was like a couple days later we come out here because i was like man it's probably really smooth right so i i we started running them and when i was running them i l seen that he was kind of limping a little bit you know and i brought him over and uh it's like the callus that you get right you know the calluses that you get on your hands right there well his little callus on the bottom of his uh 
his paw, one of them like peeled and it was just hanging there. And I was like, man, that's where I, I found out a thing called liquid bandage. It's like spray band-aid for animals. Um, and it works really, really well. Uh, so I sprayed that on him. He was fine in a couple days. It was no worries, but it was, I didn't think I didn't put two and two together. Like, man, you know, that's going to tear up his feet because we as humans are always wearing shoes. We don't have to withstand what's on the ground all the time. So that's a little tip trick for you. Now I'm going to be real with you. We're only going to do about 10 more minutes of it. All right. And then after about 10 more minutes, we'll cut it off. Um, what else was I? What else is there to talk about? Yeah, if you guys have any suggestions on what I should talk about while we're out here, let me know. We're just going to keep walking and walking and walking, walking, walking. Hmm. You guys want to know about my what all I can cook? You, you guys want me to start doing some good recipes for you? Look, <laughs> dog dad of the year. Hey, speaking about dog dad of the year. Uh, I, so I got squirreled, right? Um, well, I said something and it made me think about something else. Uh, we, if you haven't noticed yet, a couple days ago, we went to a cheerleading competition. Um, my kids do, uh, two of my daughters, I have three children. Um, I have two daughters and one boy. Uh, both of my daughters do professional cheerleading. So we travel all around the country and, uh, we perform at all different types of arenas expo centers venues um we performed at the indianapolis colt stadium right there on the field also during the pregame um yeah you you name the stadium we've probably been there or we're going there all right um make a long story short i really really support my children in all of their sports and what i mean i really support them is i I jump for joy. I scream. I I do everything that Look, I, I when my kids are doing bad, I'm screaming, "Come on, let's go. You got this." You know, keep them motivated. When, when they're not doing good, uh when they are doing good, I still do the same thing. I had a lady come up to me at the cheer competition and she goes, you know, you're the best cheer that I've ever seen. You're the best cheer that I've ever been around. And I said, what? Like, why, why would you say something like that? And she goes, well, you come out here and you, you know, the, a lot of these competitions, you're cheering for a team that your daughter's not even on. And I go, yeah, correct. You guys from the same gym, we're still family. She goes, but why wouldn't you just leave or why wouldn't you just sit there and let, let the other parents? Because we're a family. She goes, man, that, that, I just want to say that's awesome of you to scream, get everybody saying, CKA, CKA, you know, legacy, legacy, to Lady Legends, to um, Dynasty when we were on that team, to, it, you know, I scream and I support my kids and I make sure everybody's having fun. And if they're not having fun, I'm going to try my hardest to make it fun for them. What I'm, what I'm trying to, I don't know what I'm, look, I am the loudest, proudest damn cheer dad there is along with sports dad when it comes to any of my kids sporting activities. My son, he plays every single, every single sport. Right now it's soccer, indoor soccer. Next will be, I think, outdoor soccer, baseball, um, baseball. And then uh, we have um, football. Oh, yes, I am that football dad. I am. When it comes to football time, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a what you call a fence walker. I walk up and down the fence. So when the team moves, I move with them <laughs> along the fence. And I, uh, I scream. Look, I'm like, hit them, hit them low, hit them hard. Let's go, get that first down. You know, it's... 
No, when I was a kid, um, my parents just sat there. They they cheered, but I wanted them to be like the loudest, the most proud of their uh, of their the, the most. I want them to be. I wanted my parents to be so proud of me that I wanted to seriously hear it in their voice, loud, louder than everybody else. I don't know why I wanted that. I don't know. So, growing up, that's what I wanted. So I give it to my kids. Now you can ask my kids, dead, dead, uh, uh, what do they call it, dead butt, but the other word. Um, you, you ask them. Does everybody on your team know who your dad is? They'll say, "Yep, he's the loud one." D- who doesn't like it? Not a single person will say anything. Because a lot of these times, these parents will sit on their phones the whole time and not even see their child play the sport. I don't know what I've... Um, look, best advice I've ever gotten was, there's no manual to raising children, otherwise everybody would raise the perfect child. All you can do is the best of your... Uh, the, all you can do is the best of your ability with the circumstances that you are that you have at hand. So... My life isn't perfect. It's far from perfect. I'm not the best dad. But I try. I try my hardest. Some days I don't try hard enough. And that's alright. As long as I recognize it and I can try to fix it. You know what I mean? So this uh, Tuesday, walk and talk is going to be coming to an end here shortly. Uh, I don't want it to be no more than 25, 30 minutes. Oh. Hmm. oh yeah, but anyways, the, the, the lady said, man, you're the best cheer dad, and I just want to say thank you for being an awesome cheer dad. I had to leave after she said that, and I cried, and I cried, and I cried. <laughs> Why did I cry? Well, look, I'm tearing up right now. Because most people don't realize what I think about on a day-to-day basis. If they did, <laughs> they'd l- <laughs> yeah. I struggle a lot mentally and physically. Life's not easy. I try my hardest to smile and keep going. Still doesn't happen like that sometimes. One thing I'll always try to do is uh, try try to be the best best parent I can be. I, I've messed up sometimes. And sometimes I wasn't there because of when I was in the military, I was always gone. I would choose to be with my soldiers than choose to be with my family. And I missed a lot of my children's life. A lot of their life. I was gone in Iraq for my sons from <laughs> zero to one years old. You want to know what I, the only thing I saw from uh, my son do from zero to one? Is back then we had the webcams. They they just came and they were so slow and everything. But uh, I was sitting in Iraq talking to uh, my wife. I was talking to her, and next thing you know, my son he was he was only crawling backwards. You know, for the longest time he wouldn't crawl forwards. So I kept watching him in the webcam right behind the wife while me and her were talking. The next thing you know, he started. Uh, crawling forwards and I didn't tell her nothing I had just sat there and soaked it in for like two three minutes watching my son crawl forwards and she had no clue that's the only thing I saw first my wife she says I'm glad you saw that when I came home from Iraq my son wanted nothing to do with me I got off the bird got off the big bird big plane and I reached out for my son. He just cried and boo-hooed. He didn't want nothing to do with me. He didn't know who I was. 
So you want to know what I did? As I went over to Walmart and I bought, I think it was like $100, $200 worth of uh, Hot Wheels cars. And I sat there in his little play area and played by myself with those cars. Tw 10 minutes go by, 20 minutes go by, 30 minutes go by. About an hour goes by and uh, he crawls over to me. And ever since then, that bond can't be broken. I've taken, taken my son hunting, deer hunting. I've took him turkey hunting. I've taken him duck hunting, uh, mushroom hunting, you name it. We've done it. Um, nobody taught me how to do a lot of things in life growing up. Um, as in how to hunt. I'm learning all my own trial and error with my son. Nobody, I didn't have the, I wasn't raised the best growing up. So what do I do is I try my best with my kids. That's all you can do. You know what I mean? Try your best with the circumstances that you have. Because not everybody has the same circumstances as you. Oh man, sometimes I just get squirreled. Sometimes I just get squirreled. We're gonna go set this down right over here real quick. And uh, tell y'all, tell y'all goodbye. Well, I hope you guys had a good time. It's been about 25, 30 minutes. I know myself and Mr. Fluffy Bear had an amazing time um, on this Tuesday walk and talk. So we'll see you guys on the next episode with Daniel Lubigo and the Fluffy Poodle. Give me a high five, buddy. Other hand, not that one, this one. High five, <laughs> bye bye.